Um, all right, so we want to talk a little bit more about what it's like to be in a company doing this stuff. So Etsy uses um, a process called continuous deployment, which is an engineering environment. But the things that John is going to talk about today apply to all kinds of teams. So if you are not a technical person, this is not the time to check your email. You want to stay with us and listen to this talk. Please welcome John. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for having me. There we go. So imagine for a minute that you work for a company of about 500 employees, and you're doing about $1.5 billion gross sales per year in over 200 countries around the world. And you make changes to production website about 30 times a day, every single day. This is where Etsy is today. Etsy is a marketplace for people around the world to connect, buy, and sell unique goods. And our mission is to reimagine commerce in ways to create a more fulfilling and lasting world. So I'm going to talk today about, first, why continuous deployment works for us and how it could work for you, what pieces need to be in place, so prerequisites to make it work in your organization, and how you can get started using some of those pieces. So first, what makes this successful for us? First thing is that anytime you make changes, there's going to be risk. Uh, but this minimizes risk because we decrease the time between the code being written and the, and the, the time it's pushed to production. And in effect, this creates small chain sets, uh, which makes it much easier to debug if there is a problem. It makes the integration process much smoother by frequently pushing small changes into the mainline branch. Rather than developers working off in their siloed branches, we're continuously pushing small pieces of code into the main branch. So integration is pretty easy. Uh, it creates engineer happiness. People love the immediate feedback cycle that they get from being able to push their features directly into production. Um, they can work on something, push it, and see the effects on the community of millions of people. And this is a theme I've seen throughout this conference, and it's a great one. It presents more uh, learning opportunities for the organization. Uh, less releases would be a less opportunities to learn. So the more frequently that we can release code, the more we can do A-B testing, experimentation, uh, and prototypes of new features. So what pieces need to be in place for this to work for you? Uh, there are both technical and cultural prerequisites. I'm going to go through the technical ones first. You need some kind of continuous integration environment. Uh, it goes without saying that you need to be able to run tests to gain some amount of confidence that the code that you're pushing is good. And you should focus on uh, builds that are reliable and fast. Uh, you need reliability so that when you're re ready to deploy, you're not stuck trying to fix broken tests. And you need speed so that you're not waiting for slow tests to complete before you can push the code to production. Um, and this is why we keep a stable trunk so that it can always be pushed to production. Um, we should always be able to push the main line to production at any point in time. And we have a testing SLA of five minutes so that our tests run quickly um, so we can gain a little bit of confidence before we push the code to production. And we also have something called a try server that engineers can run uh, their tests before they push them into the main line so there's confidence that the tests aren't going to break once they get there. Um, there's a correlation between the number of steps uh, to run tests and if engineers will actually run them. So it turns out typing three letters, try, uh, to kick your tests off and run them under the same infrastructure that our test suites run for builds uh, makes, makes it easier for engineers to run their tests. And you can check out how we do this on our GitHub. Uh, the next thing that you need is monitoring. You need to be able to see the effects of what is getting deployed. Uh, you have to be able to see when the code is deployed and its effects on the website, and also who deployed it. Uh, also, instrumentation. So we aim to be able to instrument each layer of the system. Uh, we want to be able to trace a bullet through the system to pinpoint problems. Um, we have the ability to ask questions about anything that happened in the request or the response um, from the browser all the way down to the Ethernet layer to pinpoint problems. When you push code, you should be able to see exactly where problems occurred so that you can fix uh, issues. OK, next thing that's important is feature flags. So what is a feature flag? Uh, it's just a way to quickly turn a piece of functionality on or off. We call this branching in code. So instead of uh, developers creating branches and working off in siloed environments, they actually create con conditional statements in the code that respect these flags. 
So if the flag is on, it does one thing, and if it's off, it does another. Um, and this can evolve into ramp ups. So a, an easy way to get rid of a rigid release cycle where you release code dark to 0% of your users and slowly ramp it up. You may ramp it up internally to the people that work within the company first to gain confidence, and then perhaps to one, then 5%, and slowly gain more confidence in your features as you ramp them up to more people. And we also have uh, some example code on GitHub to see how we do this, and uh, it also is our AB framework. <clears throat> so people can do this on their own. Uh, everything is software-based. There's a button that abstracts the deployment process, so people don't have to know how to deploy. They just have to know that when they push that button, that the code is going to land exactly where they expect it to land. Um, they can act as their own ops team and their own release manager when they push their own code, and they own their code. So the next thing is the culture. This is the hardest part. Everybody from the top down has to have the right mindset for this to work for your organization. And it's important to realize that there's a trade-off uh, between more small risks and fewer bigger risks. Like I said before, anytime you push a change, you're risking something. But if you push smaller changes, you're gonna, have small, you're gonna also have smaller risks with that. Um, and this is the difference between mean time to resolution and mean time between failures. So in the real world, I like to think of this as the difference between a Jeep and a Rolls Royce. Whereas a Jeep is rugged but is made to break down and does break down a lot, it's very easy to replace the parts in a Jeep. But a Rolls Royce doesn't break down very often, and when it does, it's very expensive to replace the parts. So would you rather have fewer small risks or many bigger risks? Sorry, more small risks or fewer bigger risks? <laughs> uh, have trust in the mechanism that you use to deploy code and also in the people that are deploying the code. So everybody has to have buy-in that it's okay for the engineers to push that button, that they're responsible enough to push their code to the production website. Um, and the mechanism that you use to deploy code, the people that are using it have to have trust that the code is going to land where they expect it to land. Um, eliminate the ceremony of sort of a big release. If you're doing sprints and you have a big release at the end of a sprint, uh, you should instead try to push smaller changes throughout that sprint. Um, and likewise, if you have a big rollback in the event of a problem, uh, if, you're, if you're not practicing repetition, then it becomes a bigger event to try to, to try when those events do happen. So build confidence doing the same thing over and over again. And get used to the idea that deploys are not necessarily releases. A release can be part of a deploy, but a deploy doesn't have to be a release. Um, consider releasing your code dark using feature flags and just push smaller incremental changes. So how can you get started with this? First thing is dashboards. If you have metrics and graphs, try to bunch them together into dashboards that, that make sense that people can look at so they can find where to look for problems. Uh, we have a deploy dashboard that has leading and lagging indicators of what could go wrong, such as error logs, uh, registrations per second, logins per second, checkouts, uh, web and database activity, you name it. Um, and then it's a quick glance uh, once code is pushed to see if there are spikes in that graph. The next thing is having non-blocking tests. Like I said, you need your tests to be reliable and fast. So move any tests that are flaky or slow or broken to a non-blocking queue so that it doesn't get in the way of pushing code. It's actually OK to throw out tests that don't work. We have actually gotten rid of a lot of tests um, because they were just holding us back. And, and tests are really just one way to gain confidence in, that, in the deploys uh, working. So we also gain confidence after the deploys are pushed uh, with our metrics and graphs and user feedback. Uh, keep it simple. You need to make sure the deploy process is as simple as possible. Like I said, we use a push button process so engineers don't have to think about what's going on under that button. They just have to think about what the effects are on our metrics and on our, our website. And also make running your tests simple. So you should be able to take the least, uh, least technical person in your organization and let them push code. Have your CEO co push code. Ha we've had VCs push code. I kid you not, we've even had dogs push code. <laughs> and start by pushing a single thing. Um, if you're not doing continuous deployment yet, you can start with just one file, like a config file. Maybe you push feature flags in that file. Uh, you can push 
one single service if you're a service-oriented architecture. Work on that service, iterate, make the deployment around that service better, and then expand that into more services. And lastly, you may push just a single feature, um, also using feature flags uh, to, to gate things on and off. So hopefully this may give you a good idea of how uh, continuous deployment can be successful for you. And thanks for having me. Thanks.